เอาไฮ่โอ้ it's good to see you all Sideways glance, I didn't have a chance. You pulled me in like fish in wire. You touched me, it felt like fire. I used to think that I couldn't lose, that my love was meant to choose. Yeah, I'm a wreck, yeah, I'm all stuck. You're just my luck. You're just my luck, yeah. I wonder if I deserve the way it hit me when you threw that curve, the way you made my body shake. Yeah, it must have been my mistake. My dreams used to be a surprise. Now you run to see when I close my eyes. I'm a wreck, yeah, I'm all stuck. You're just my luck. I guess you're just my luck, yeah. Sun, I get hail. I call heads. It falls tails. It falls tails each time. Said I'd go to race one kiss, wouldn't do it for a million bucks. But you're just my luck. You're just my luck, yeah. Sneeze! It's about to happen. <coughs> Sorry. Cheers. Mhm. Mm it's good to see y'all. Thanks for joining on joining me. Um, it was a pretty. For those of you that were around on Sunday night, that was a. Uh, <laughs> That was a pretty uh, fun time we had at the Black Bear Festival. And for those of you who did not see it, we were scheduled to headline uh, the festival on Sunday night, um, which has become a really fun fall tradition for the Adam Ezra group. But it was a nasty, nasty day. It was raining. It was cold. We showed up on the festival grounds and it was like, you know, people... We're in ponchos, shivering, huddled together to try and share body heat. It was so, so miserable. And so uh, um, uh, I got together with my buddy, Ian, who runs the festival. And we both decided, you know what? Let's figure something out. And there was this warehouse at the top of this hill on the Goshen Fairgrounds where they had a little tiny workshop stage set up and... Um, we walked in there and I took a look and I said, yeah, we can, we've squeezed into smaller than this. We can do this. And, uh, and it was really cool for the next like hour, their sound crew, like, right. Decided to like 
outfit that stage with a with enough sound equipment to run sound for the band and then we brought everybody that was left at the festival into this little warehouse and we and we just we just threw down for a little bit on Sunday and so anyways we, we ended up live streaming and gathering uh, for those of you who saw it I don't know how it looked it might not have, might not have looked super great <laughs> in a tiny little workshop stage in the middle of a warehouse but man it was uh it was a really fun night it was a really fun night and i was uh i'm glad to see uh uh some of you gatherers hanging with us that night to listen online and a bunch of gatherers were there in person which also made me happy um so cheers cheers y'all i have uh three goals during this uh tuesday night gathering number one i'm going to play some leftovers that was a leftover um and uh, uh goal number two i want to play um i want to try to play our new release hold each other now um on guitar i'm not sure i have done that with you guys yet um but i have been we play enough shows without the keyboard there that i have uh we as a band have decided to like figure out an arrangement with guitar um, so that we can still play the song even when we don't have keys. And um, so I'd like to do that, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about the story uh, behind that song, because it is an interesting story. Um, also, in another handful of weeks, we are going to be um, releasing another song on Spotify and all other streaming platforms, uh, a duet, an acoustic duet that I uh, recorded with John. Oats uh, that we wrote together and uh, that's uh, I want to talk about that it's a song that uh, many of you gathers already know um, uh, but I haven't really talked about it a lot uh, yet my third goal is to sing a song tonight with my mama who is up visiting from Boston Joanne Hamill uh, some of you all uh, know her uh, because Whenever she comes to a show, I drag her up on the stage to sing with me. Uh, she is an amazing singer-songwriter uh, and uh, and an amazing person and one of the biggest reasons that I do what I do in my life. And so I'm very, uh, I feel very lucky that she's up here visiting me and Allie and Willa and Piper for the week. And uh, we have been hanging out in our little whirlwind whirlwind crazy home up here and it is uh it's been super fun so she's hanging out here in uh in my little studio uh gathering with us tonight and uh and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna drag her up to sing with me before we finish up this evening so there um leftover number one was a song called uh you're just my luck and you know what it's really funny because uh, never recorded with the band, never arranged with the band, released on a solo, uh, a solo release called Find A Way, just on streaming platforms, a little underground release in honor of one of the Get Folk House concert tours. And, um, but it remains one of our, I don't know, quite understand it, but, uh, somehow it's gotten into circulate. Maybe it's being rec recommended to a lot of people out there, but... When you go on to our uh, our page on Spotify, uh, "You're Just My Luck" is one of the uh, one of the top top stream songs lately, which I think is kind of cool. <laughs> um, and for those of you who have not heard me get on my soapbox uh, yet about streaming music. Um, for artists, you may be surprised at my uh, my beliefs uh, about platforms like Apple Music and Spotify and Pandora. I think they are wonderful. That's right, I said wonderful for uh, underground, independent, grassroots artists such as myself. Um, there is no other way that uh, that our music could instantaneously and very easily right, be spread around the world in a way that people, right, can just click a button and listen and check it out. Um, there is no other way for an artist like me 
uh, uh, to have my music recommended to other people who have similar music tastes around the world, right? And these platforms are doing that. Um, and so um, one of the really cool things, right, that is in our control, and when I say our, I mean mine and yours, the whole community surrounding our music is the more we listen to these streaming platforms, the more you all stream our music, right? You ain't stealing from us. You are actually, right, creating more ment momentum for our songs out there in the ether. <laughs> and uh, and you are you are triggering algorithms which are getting which is getting our music recommended to new listeners all the time. About 30% of people listening to our stuff on Spotify, they are, they are coming because the algorithm is recommending us. And I just think that that's super cool, right? Um, so anyways, listen and enjoy. And um, thank you so much. So many of you gatherers who have been streaming uh hold each other now our new release that we just came out uh came out with i haven't checked lately i feel like it was uh around fifty thousand different people having streamed streamed the song uh which is uh which is pretty cool um i'm actually looking right now and we're gonna see let's see what it says boom fifty three thousand. pretty fun right kind of cool Kind of cool. Um, okay. How about another leftover? How about another leftover that is an unreleased song? Um, there was a gal named uh, Jeannie who organized a fundraiser uh, for uh, a nonprofit organization in East, Greenwich, in East Greenwich, Rhode Island, where we played a week or two ago, um, and uh, people brought non-perishable food items. Uh, this is an organization that just is is helping families who who could use a little bit of extra help. I love that so many of our shows are partnered with some uh, some activism, and uh, and oftentimes that activism is generated from you all. That is one of the one of the best gifts and rewards I could ever receive as an artist is to have that kind of, that kind of thing circling around the music that I make. I love it. And that night, um, I think, Jeannie, if you're watching this, I don't know if, I, I may be confusing this conversation with another conversation, and if so, I apologize, but I remember being you in the conversation, in my head at least, but, um, she had asked about a song that I wrote during the pandemic, during the gathering series that I first shared with you all, um, uh, that I've been calling Lost Some Time, but it could be, I may, may have lost some time, may have lost some time in Georgia. I have not quite honed in 100% on the name of this song, but uh, I'm gonna see if I can remember. It's been a while since I've uh, tried to play it, but I saw it on my leftover sheet and um, I thought I'd give it a shot. May have lost some time in Georgia And I have just myself to blame Felt the world upon my shoulders I was running away I know I must be getting older I feel the wind blow past my Pour myself another cold one Let the stereo play On a run and I'm trying to get it right I feel 
the sun, but I struggle to see the light. Get it done, do an Emmy, help I can find shit. Let's try that again. Get it done, using all the help I can find. I may have lost some time. May have lost some time. We'll have known the cradle of the highway. I've studied the lines across my palm. I hope that I ain't drifting sideways as I roll on. About as wise as my losses along the way I learn more the less that I try to say Hope my heart can teach me to read my mind and I may have lost some Lost sometimes. Give just a little, try just a little, trust just a little. Live just a little more. Hold on just a little, laugh just a little, hear just a little. Feel just a little more, yeah. Reach out just a little, think just a little, learn just a little. Love just a little more, yeah. Believe just a little, hope just a little, heal just a little. Just a little more And you may have lost some time Yeah you may have lost some time Ooh, You know, sometimes we talk about, uh, uh, like the equivalent of like sharing sketches, sharing, sharing, sharing songs before they're not done, sharing little drafts. That song still feels to me like maybe it's not quite finished. Maybe it is. Maybe it just needs a little something. Um, uh, uh, a picture, uh, a picture having a, uh, 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 a beautiful guitarist in the studio with me, uh, uh, just kind of weaving and expressing kind of those feelings um, through uh, through through some acoustic riffing that is kind of going in and out of the voice throughout that song, which I think could be, uh, which I think it, which I think could be super cool, um, um, and maybe that's what the song needs. I'm not sure. Every time I sing it, I think to myself, eh, maybe it needs something. Anyways. Okay. Let's talk about our new release. Hold each other now. Um, written, uh, co-written with John Oates. Uh, but the, like many of the songs that I wrote with John, um, like many of the uh, songs that I've written with John, 
I mean, John's a busy guy, and so when I have writing sessions with him, I will often bring like 15 different ideas to the table. Um, I always have, right, and we've talked about this before, I always have a certain amount of songs and ideas bubbling in various places in there throughout my days, right? And oftentimes um, in the midst of a day, in the midst of a drive, in the midst of taking out the trash, right? One of those ideas will bubble to the surface and I'll play around with the idea and then I'll put it away for later. And, I, and there's always a, a bunch of them happening, right? And so uh, when I have a writing session that I, uh, that I write, I don't, what I want to try to avoid oftentimes, because when you have songwriting sessions, especially in Nashville, right, you have like a small window to create a song. You have, you know, sometimes it's three or four hours, three or four hours, and boom, song has to be created by the end of that. That's a lot of pressure, especially because some songs for me as a writer, when I write by myself, some songs take a very long time to write. Sometimes, some songs take years to write. Sometimes I need to write the beginning of a song and then like walk away and process it for a while. It's a very different kind of writing when you are co-writing with uh, somebody else. Uh, and there are, of course, even within that, there are lots of different ways to co-write, right? But, um, so when uh, John and I were writing Hold Each Other Now, uh, it came from an idea that had been bubbling for me uh, for, for years. And it went back to, um, an experience I had at the end of, I, th I believe it was at the end of high school. Um, uh, uh, my, uh, my father and I went on a trip together. We went on a trip down to Venezuela for, uh, for about a week. Um, it was kind of as a graduation gift. He and I went on a week long adventure together and uh during that time we rode along the coast uh of uh of venezuela we flew in and out of caracas we uh caracas we drove along the coast we uh we went out into the water we did some scuba diving we drove up into the andes mountains we did some hiking up there um uh we just it was a it was an awesome uh it was an awesome father-son uh, adventure on the last night, um, we were staying in a hotel and, uh, and, uh, and my father went to sleep and I went down to the bar, uh, because I was 18 years old and I could drink down in Venezuela. I could not drink legally in the U S and, uh, and I went down to this bar by myself first, probably for first time, like I ever, right. Was in a bar just going to a bar, sitting down, ordering a drink by myself. Man, I felt like, right? I felt like a man. I felt like, uh, I felt like a full grown man. Um, <laughs> and I ordered, a, I can't remember. I, I sure as hell wasn't drinking whiskey yet. I probably ordered a beer and I was sitting there at the bar. And then they even, then it got even crazier. This beautiful, beautiful woman in this gorgeous dress walks up to me, like jaw-droppingly beautiful. And like a woman, like this gorgeous woman. I, I, I had a hard time finding words. I have a hard time finding words even describing the way that I felt sitting at that bar with this woman walking up to me and she said, hello in uh, broken English. And uh, and I said, hello back in broken Spanish. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, uh, and then she sat down. She sat down next to me. And, uh, and we had a drink together and we were talking a little bit and she was just, she was really nice. And like, um, and uh, you know, every once in a while I would see the bartender who was, right, uh, an older fella, nice fella, served me my drink, right, and uh, uh, kind of glancing over at us, you know, and uh, and at a certain point she 
uh, she excused herself to go to the bathroom and, uh, and I'm sitting there and the bartender uh, walks up to me and he says, hey, you know, um, she's working tonight, right? And then it all came clear, right? I was a potential customer and, uh, and when she came back, right, I, uh, I asked her, I asked her about it and, uh, we talked a little bit and, uh, and at the end of our conversation, I just kind of, right, I just, I said, thank you. Um, you know, probably, I'm probably, uh, probably not your guy tonight. And I gave her all the money that I had in my pockets, which didn't amount to a whole lot, but, uh, uh, and uh, we said goodnight and she kind of, she, uh, she walked off and, uh, <laughs> and I went back up uh, to sleep. My first, uh, uh, very, not my, well, one of my very first very adult <laughs> encounters. Um, and <laughs> and uh, so that, right, this, uh, this song, Hold Each Other Now, that we released in September, it came from that experience. I didn't put myself in Caracas. Uh, I put myself, uh, as I was writing, right, the voice of this song, uh, I was picturing, uh, you know, I was, I was, I was picturing, uh, midday hanging out in, uh, one of the pubs in Southie, right, and, uh, uh, enter scene, right, and I played this song, and it, and at the, at the, I kind of had the story kind of plotted out. And then when I brought it to John, he kind of liked what I was doing on the piano. He liked some of the melody. And he and I wrote the chorus to the song, right? At the, at, when I brought it to him, I think the chorus just had a, had a, me just rep repeating something like mercy, right? Um, uh, the last line, uh, uh, of the last verse is, I hope where she's heading, it's mercy she knows. And I think that originally my idea for a chorus for this song was just to kind of, to chant mercy, right? And John was like, okay, I get that, but I think we can do better on this chorus. And so, uh, that's, that's how this, that's how this song came to be. Uh, it's now called Hold Each Other Now, and, uh, and thanks to many of you gatherers out there, it has been uh, uh, it has been streamed by a whole lot of folks across the world, and uh, that makes me super happy. Clock in the afternoon. I'm drunk at the bar. She comes and sits down beside me. She says, Boy, I don't know how lucky you are. I got a place around the corner. Where we can go to your car. I could take you to heaven. Don't cost much to see God mm -hmm. Well, this emptiness inside us Can easily divide us But if we hold each other now Mercy and kindness just may remind us to hold each other now. 
When you're tired of the table On which your life is at stake When your heart's lost its rhythm When you owe more than you make When you're holding it together But your grip is starting to break Come and sit down beside me We'll drink one to our mistakes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where there's emptiness inside us Couldn't easily demand us But if we hold each other Just may remind us to hold each other now. Hold each other. Hold I know when it's raining Just like I know when I'm alone We stumble through lies Just like I'm about to stumble on home I gave that woman a 50 Told her to take it and go And I hope where she's headed it's mercy she knows mm -hmm. Where the safetyness inside us Can easily divide us But if we hold each other now Just me and us to hold each other now. Send the nails inside us. So, in case you didn't know, that's the story behind Hold Each Other Now. <laughs> um, I've only told that story once or twice, I think. And uh, so I'm glad, and I'm not sure. I'm going to guess that we probably haven't talked about it on the Gathering series. It's uh, funny to me to think that uh, after uh, 836 uh sessions together online uh that uh that there are still s sh stories to be shared <laughs> um thank you for the claps thank you for the love <laughs> oh right on i like our tuesday night hangs i like them i really do and i really and i do want to continue i feel like often goes unspoken, but I want to thank 
all of you member supporters of the Gathering Series for uh, for continuing to uh, give a little bit to the series uh, every month. Uh, it really it makes a difference and it means a lot. And uh, and some of you give more than a little, and uh, it just it all. It all is wonderful, and I'm grateful for it all. And for those of you uh, that don't, uh, that aren't member supporters, that aren't giving to this series, that's okay. I'm glad that you're here hanging out too. This thing that I do, and this thing that we all do, I ain't doing it to, and I ain't doing it to make money. We're doing it to, I'm doing it to stay connected with y'all as much as I can, even when I'm not coming to your part of the country or the world. Um, and uh, and I, I'm so grateful that so many of y'all uh, uh, continue to watch the Gathering Series and hang out with me. Um, either live, but you know, I, and maybe for those of you that watch a lot of these live, uh, you may not appreciate this, but actually most of you gatherers will be watching this after the fact. Most of our viewership happens uh, after uh, after the live streams are over, um, which I also think is cool. So anyways. Okay. How about another story? <laughs> um There was a song that I wrote with John called Juna Please. Uh, and uh, we released it on an album called Hurricane Wind. And um, uh, I love the song. I love playing the song with my bandies. Um, but it was a handful of years ago, right? You know, before COVID, uh, I went down to Nashville and uh, John and I did some writing, but we also spent a couple days in the studio together. I think it was actually just one day, one marathon day in the studio get together. And we brought a camera crew with us. For those of you uh, uh, that know, there is a, um, there is a like little mini documentary of that day that we just released on YouTube uh, that uh, a ton of y'all uh, watched right off the bat. I mean, I'm, I'm just, Super grateful that there's so much excitement and enthusiasm over this. But we, you know, John and I went into the studio. We brought the camera crew. Uh, we did some interviews. We talked about the process. Um, and uh, and then we went into the studio together and we recorded uh, a handful of songs. Uh, one of the songs uh, that we recorded live that day uh, is, uh, is All I Am, which ended up be in an acoustic duet that we released as part of the Hurricane Wind album. We then ended up going into the studio with the band and recording Juna Please as like a right traditional recorded band song on that album. But that day, John and I, um, we sat down and performed an acoustic duet of this song. And, uh, and we are going to officially release that version, that acoustic version on uh, on Spotify and other streaming platforms um, sometime over the next uh, couple months. Uh, my friend Robin will know exactly, actually, when we're releasing it. I should know the release date, but I am, uh, I am, I am, I have failed you. I, be, I have failed you. I don't know the release date. Um, but I wrote this song, actually, uh, you know, one of my heroes, as may or may not surprise you, and for those of you that know me well, uh, you'll already know this. One of my heroes is, uh, is uh, as a songwriter, is is, is Bruce Springsteen. Uh, uh, I love the stories he tells within his songs. I know I love that his songs are rooted in a folk tradition. Uh, I love uh, um, that uh, uh, that the grit and determination that it took him to make it as uh, an artist. And I love all of the ways he uh, has given back over his uh, incredible career. I, uh, we love playing in Asbury Park these days, which I think has one of the m most fun music scenes in the country. 
and uh, and there wouldn't be a music scene in Asbury Park without uh, guys like Bruce Springsteen and Southside Johnny uh, and uh, uh, and so uh, but I came to Bruce's music relatively late. I'd been writing songs and playing music and for for one reason or another, you know, I don't think I connected very deeply with the E Street Band. Um, uh, to me, that uh, Bruce's band creates like this wall of sound that uh, is great. And I love the E Street Band and I love them playing. I've seen them a bunch of times and I think they're great, right? But, but sometimes I feel like uh, a lot of the nuance and subtlety of Bruce's writing gets a little swallowed up. Um, uh, and uh, I like some of his more uh, sparsely recorded albums the best. Um, and uh, um, anyways, so because of all those reasons, I came to be a deep Bruce Springsteen listener a little bit later on in my life. I'd already been playing music and writing music and performing out for a little while. I was playing in uh, any bar that was willing to hire me. And at some point or another, I listened to Greetings from Asbury Park and I really listened to it for the first time. And it really, uh, and it is music connected with me in a different kind of way than it ever had before. And, uh, and I listened to that song over and over again. And then, uh, and that night, uh, that night I wrote, uh, I wrote June of Police. And, uh, uh, and it was like, not quite formulated. Um, again, the verse is kind of the story, the concept, some of the melody lines, were put together but it was still then afterwards for years it was one of the songs that would bubble from time to time in one place or another and uh and one day it was one of the songs for one of our writing sessions when i was down in nashville with john and uh john was like well play that song again yeah i like that let's let's work on that a little bit and uh, and when we came up and we finished, we finished Juno Please that day. And it was, uh, it was, uh, it was a fun adventure to take over the finish line with him. It's been a, one of our, uh, favorite songs to play out as a band. It's just a fun singing along kind of a song. And so, uh, I'm really excited for y'all to hear, if you haven't yet, uh, the acoustic performance, uh, the duet between John and I in the studio. And I'm going to uh, play the song for you now. Mm -hmm. Hey there, Jonah. I know it's been a long time now. Thought I'd step on by I've been driving around this town for the past two hours now Thought I'd say I miss you baby Let's talk a little while June the police Feel like home and can't you see me trying Where your daddy works you Took me now for whiskey and beer At about five too many He said, boy, I let the best things in my life slip on What I gotta do To kick your ass in the gear Yeah. 
this whole cool world all around, all around it. Run out of road or we run out of night. I believe you and I were meant to be together. I don't believe in much these days. Yeah, yeah. When I'm with you, it's quiet inside my head. It's the only time I really know it's gonna be okay. end of my vodka tonic which means uh, uh, our time together is probably uh, coming close to being at an end and uh, I have been saving I have been saving a little treater for you gatherers um, I mentioned it early on but uh, my mama is here tonight hanging with me uh, she is up in Maine for the week visiting me and Allie and the girls and uh, and even though she's been a little under the weather lately, uh, I made a promise to come and hang and sing a song with me tonight. And uh, so I'm gonna bring her on right now. Say hi, y'all. Joanne Hamill. Come here. Oh. Let's see if you're gonna be in this shot here. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Mama. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Oh. Hey, gatherers. All right, we're going to have to. Maybe we should back what up. Should just I a, do? Well, let's just back up and squeeze in a little bit. We're going to get uncomfortable. Yeah, there we are. Wait a second. Like that? Yeah. All Look right. at us. All right. Look at us. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Okay.
trees Darling, so it goes Some things were meant to be Take my hand Take my hope Falling in love with you. Aww. <laughs> Should we sing one last song with the gatherers? You want to do the toast with me? Sure. Yeah? We didn't talk about that. No, we didn't talk about that. Sorry. It's okay. I should have warned you. It's okay. Um, thank you for gathering with us tonight. Y'all, it's been really nice to be with you. Uh, uh, we're going to be in Concord, New Hampshire on Friday. I know that. I'm trying to think where else we are playing. This weekend, maybe some kind of private gatherings and stuff like that that we're doing. I know that they're doing a, uh, a cool kind of like mini kind of festival in Concord and they've invited us to play. Somebody was telling me that it already may be sold out. If it is, I apologize for even bringing it up. Um, if that is our one public show this, this week, we will do our best to gather with you. Let us drink to the wind at our back. May it always flow steady wherever you roam. May it turn when you're ready to carry you home. May it keep you ahead of the rain. Would this be better up a step? No, it doesn't matter for me. I think we might sound better up a step. All right. Raise up your glasses <laughs> Let us drink to the heavens above Some say it's a glimpse of God's great design Some say it's the science of all things combined May we look up and always feel Let us drink to 
drink that we share. That was fun. Thanks for singing that one with me, Mama. Always fun. <laughs> Thank you, gatherers, for hanging out with me tonight, with us tonight. Please stay safe. Keep on looking out for one another. And I'll see you again soon.